All right, so for those of you who watched the uh, earlier version of this video, I have to apologize. Apparently, I accidentally reduced the video volume instead of the music volume uh, in my editing process. That was a, a pretty stupid oopsie on my part, and I decided to go ahead and re-upload it without the audio you know, being complete crap. So uh, here it is. Hey everyone, welcome to From the Depths. I'm Menti, and this is episode 84 of the Battleship Brawl Season 4 Tournament. This episode, we've got the Varluk class by M. Serzum, which is an I do or die situation. It wins this fight, it becomes a champion. It loses, it falls, and is retired uh, without honors. Helping make that decision today is the Charon by Sentinel 2K6, which is a ship we're just now seeing. Very different looking vessel. Got a wedge shaped hull. Most of its guns are sort of forward mounted. Those propellers on the underside with uh, JBGs that are actually protected a little bit. The Charon looks more like it should be like a spaceship or something than a uh, you know a water bound battleship, but it still looks pretty cool. Well, I will give it that. It is a rather uh, large ship as well. Let's, I want to do a size comparison here. Okay, it's not okay. Maybe not. Maybe it's not. It seems large because it's quite wide and tall, but it's not very long. It's got this uh, heavy armor armor belt there. Wonder how much armor it actually has. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. It does not look like it has that much in the way of firepower, really. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 guns, I'm counting. Which is... Oh. <laughs> right. Right. Isn't Charon... That's... Charon is the... The, uh... Fairy Master dude that runs the... Both that goes across the river sticks, isn't it? Pretty sh yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure that's 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 correct. I could be wrong though. I'm not exactly a mythological expert. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. This um this little extension down here is a bit odd. That's gonna be a lot of drag. I, was, I have a feeling it was to give the front some more uh, buoyancy. But uh, I don't know. It's a very odd vessel. And I guess we will find out how it does here in just a moment. Because I'm going to get the camera into position and the battle is underway. Oh, the... the, the like... <laughs> The smoke. I, I like the uh, like neon purple smoke. <laughs> Charon taking some hits. We'll see how its armor is now. Oh, it seems fairly good, except that one gun did get destroyed. But... And the Varluk seems to be doing just fine. Yeah, the charge is, uh... I don't know, it's, it's hard to judge so far, but I, I feel like they aren't particularly strong. I mean... Individually. There are ten of them, so that does make a difference. And the Charon is really focused on hitting this, the frontal portion of the Varlin here, and I mean, it worked for it. It disabled that forward cannon. Ooh, even popped it off, even. Charon down to 93%, Varluk at 96%. Now the Charon's armor scheme is actually not too bad as long as it's getting hit from the front, but as soon as it, you know, 
kind of angles and gets hit from the side there. <coughs> it is pretty resistant to the to damage, but because a lot of the shells are hitting, you know, the deck and all that angling really reduces the amount of damage that those shells can do. They can't penetrate in there and have those fragments do all kinds of nasty things. But, despite this, it is still losing health significantly faster than the Varluk is. Ooh, and it's listing heavily. Rare turrets just got popped off. Actually, both of them have been popped off. I don't think the Sharon has has maybe this one gun left. Yep, that one gun is still firing, and it is still aiming towards the bow of the Varluk. It must not have a, a aim point selector card on random lock to make its target change. Which is unfortunate because once you destroy that gun up here, you don't really want to aim in that area anymore. You've got other guns to destroy. Other guns that are currently pounding your ship into pieces. Say the back and forth turning that it's doing, if it was faster, would be a pretty effective dodging tactic. But I feel like that uh, the drag caused by this flat piece up here and just the flat tip of the ship is probably making it too difficult for the engines to turn quick enough to make that motion into a good dodge. And I mean, if the ship was faster in general, if it turned faster, that would help too, obviously, but I'm talking more top speed. It just doesn't, uh... There isn't enough distance travel to really make a difference. Charn has just been uh, shredded. Turned into Swiss cheese by the Varluk's guns and all the fragments. Oh, it actually... Oh, no, it didn't. I was going to say, it actually repaired that gun, but no, no, it didn't. It's right here. And it's not going to. There's not enough materials left. It'll probably try. Because the uh, Charon isn't doing much of the way of damage, so it will likely repair all of its hull. And then it'll try to repair. Yep, see, there it is. It's trying to bring back that gun, but there's no way there's enough materials left. Not for a main gun. If you made a main gun for under 5,000 materials that performs that well, how did you not win? <laughs> like, how did you not win every round? Why don't you have more of them? Look at all this internal damage caused by those fragments. Quite a bit of uh, shredding going on inside. 
inside the ship. Yeah, not really a whole lot to say anymore other than uh, Charn is basically dead, just waiting for the uh, the actual despawn. Barleyk still has to earn that win. I mean, it's basically got it, but. we go that is a two damage charon just going to despawn and that will be the end of round one yep there we go <clears throat> we'll move on to round two and see if the charon can step it up and uh give the varluk a better fight than that first round not that that was a bad one but it did lose or if the Varluk is going to be cruising on into the uh, the Hall of Champions. Varluk is pounding the Charon once again. Varluk also taking some... Oh, it's lost uh, both of its rear guns. That is a big difference over the first round. That is a lot less firepower on the Varluk. Ooh, even one, both of them even popping off. At least the turret caps. Oh, no, never mind. Only one of them did. <laughs> I'm a derp. Well, they both might have now. That... It looks like the Charon's guns actually penetrate pretty deep when they get a side hit. Oh, and that secondary gun took a hit. Let's track this volley of shells in. Those are going to land pretty solidly into the side pretty hefty damage oh Charon is uh, having some buoyancy issues particularly in the uh, the rear where it should have the most buoyancy it also has the most weight though so I guess oh both of the rear uh, turreted guns have been knocked knocked clean off <coughs> More guns taking hits on the Charn. Looks like these two middle main guns are the only things left. Oh no. Uh, I was gonna say those look like they're coming right for it, but nah, they they weren't quite there. 
86% Varluk at 88. But uh, Charon is even worse off for uh, remaining guns. It has teams four. Let's check on the Varluk. It has eight. Literally nine. Nine barrels. Oh, never mind. Eight. I was right. Eight. <laughs> so the Charon definitely a bit of trouble here. It does have repairs going. But uh, there's, I don't think it's going to have enough to bring any guns back online. Not with all the hull damage it has. Charon has a lot of hull damage. Now those uh, buoyancy issues are turning into a, uh, a heavy, heavy list to the right. At least while it was turning and uh oh oh uh oh okay now it's kind of going back and now because it's turning the other direction it's leading that way <laughs> but man is the char and low in the water this this time around i mean last time it got pretty low as well but this time it's really low it is having some serious issues with staying afloat right now it's not quite sinking but it's not far off I don't know that it can stand to take much more flooding. I mean, it's... That's almost a 45 degree list right there. <laughs> Almost completely submerges when it goes back to. I think this, this this compartment up here is doing a lot to keep it afloat. Without that, without the air trapped inside this uh, hard to hit flat area, the nose might dip down too far to think to stay afloat. Whatever the case, it is not looking good. Varluk is at 86 percent with. You know, about half of its normal armament available to fire while the Varluk, er, I mean, the Sharon only has, like, one gun. <laughs> no, it has three. No, it actually has four, but these two front ones basically can't fire at the same time. And they look like they're pretty small. Anyway, not particularly effective. <laughs> yeah, it, it bounced off the uh, the deck, the wooden deck of the uh, Varluk. I mean, it is backed by stone, but still. When a shell's bouncing off of wood, regardless of what's backing it, it's uh, a bit lacking in damage. side flotation thing here that are pretty heavily damaged I would imagine from fragments hitting it one of those gets pierced and the charm floods down there I don't know that it'll be able to stay afloat
Well, I guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> Oh wait, that did not, that did not penetrate the air compartment. Oh, but that's alloy. Uh, would have been better to just make it wood to be honest, but. Just the fact that that is like all alloy is providing a lot of buoyancy. Alloy floats really well. Wait, does it float better or worse than wood? I forget. I think it floats better, actually. So, me saying it would be better off as wood is probably wrong. At least from a uh, buoyancy standpoint. From a cost standpoint, yeah. Current down to under 60% health. It's taking so much damage. Barluk is out of materials, but at 87%. Some more hits to this uh, flotation thing here, and oh, okay, that that definitely penetrated the air pockets. But uh, the air is not what's providing most of the buoyancy up there, so I don't know that that's going to make a difference. I did not realize that was uh, lightweight alloy at first. Even though it's... Wait, is that alloy? Is that metal? No. Now I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's alloy. It's hard to tell if it's just if it's alloy or if it's just painted metal. Oops. Whatever the case, it doesn't really matter because the Varluk is one or two volleys away from destroying the Charon. And there it is, that is a 2 damage Charon. It is going to despawn, and that is going to be the end of this match. The Varluk has managed to claw its way into the Hall of Champions, despite suffering two early losses. It held on, and uh, has proven itself worthy. <laughs> So yeah, if you haven't already, make sure you head down into the description to uh, vote to vote for the Varluk on uh, whether you think it's uh, a good-looking ship or not. Uh, while you're down there, make sure you vote for the Sharon as well. I think it's a pretty interesting-looking ship. Not a very practical one, but uh, it's 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 interesting. It's different, which is always nice. So yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the battlefield.